Hello guys, um, you're welcome to uh, this lecture. Um, in this lecture, we want to start um, discussing ring homomorphisms and um, isomorphisms. Um, because we've already discussed um, homomorphisms and isomorphisms under groups, uh, this becomes uh, a little more easier. Um, and so some of the concepts will definitely um, apply here as well. And you will see see what I mean. Okay, so in, under groups, remember we said that um, when we when we're talking about groups, we um, said that for if a function phi or map uh, phi to be um, a homomorphisms a homomorphism phi you want phi of um, a star b right to be equal to phi of a star phi b, where this star could be different from that, right? This could be star, this could be, let's say, star prime. If you have um, a function from a group G to a group G prime, okay? Star here is the binary operation under G prime and um, star, star prime is the operation under this and star here is the operation under under G, but for phi to be a homomorphism, you want this to hold, right? Um, so in the case of in the case of groups, right, you only have one binary operation here, okay? So you want if this was addition, right? You want it to be addition, whatever this is, you want that to be here. Well, in this case, we are dealing with rings, and rings you, we have two binary operations, addition and multiplication. So you want this relation to hold for both of them. Right, and so that is why um, a homomorphism under ring is defined as this. So a map from R to R prime, that is a ring R to a ring R prime here, is a, a homomorphism if for all A, B, and R, you have phi of A plus B is equal to phi of uh, A plus phi of B, right? That makes sense. So it's basically replace this one plus uh, with, um, with addition, and then this with um, addition as well. And then also here, this must apply for multiplication as well, because multiplication is also a binary operation under rings. So phi into A times B is equal to phi of A times phi of B. So in that case, our uh, binary operation is multiplication, right? Multiplication here, multiplication there as well. Okay, so that is, um, that is uh, just, it just carries over from what we know from rings. So that is the definition. So for um, a structure to be, um, uh, a ring to be um, to be classified as uh, being a, a function, right? A function um, from a, a ring to a ring will, will be called homomorphic, or is said to be a homomorphism if both both of them must hold for you to say um, it's a homomorphism. Okay, so you need both of them. So you use this. This is basically a test for homomorphism. You use both of them to um, to show that something is a homomorphism. So condition one shows that phi is a homomorphism mapping the abelian group, right? R with uh, the positive with addition to uh, R, R prime with addition, right? Um, so that's the, that's the first one. The first one is basically, uh, we know that the ring R is, a, is an abelian group, right? With regards to addition. And so this is basically what, what that is saying under addition. It is um, um, a homomorphism with regard to a billion group. Condition two requires that phi relay the locative structures of the rings in the same way, right? So just as we did for addition, we expect that to hold for multiplication uh, as well. Okay, now since phi here is uh, is a group homomorphism, right? Under addition, um, under addition, then what it, that means is that everything that we know about group homomorphisms with regard to addition also hold, okay? And then one of them, one of those uh, things we learned was um, the kernel, right? Phi here is one-to-one -one if and only if the kernel uh, takes on the, um, the identity element in, um, in G, or if like in this case in, in R, right? So the kernel is all values of X in the ring such that phi of X is equal to the identity element in R prime. It's also zero, but we just use the prime here to denote that it's in the zero is in the R prime. Okay, this has to be equal to um, zero, right? In R. 
remember. So you, you have to go back and look at the definition of a kennel, right? The last thing we did under groups. Um, so that must hold under, uh, under this as well for, for addition. Okay, so we'll look at some examples of, of how to show that um, a function or a map is a homomorphism. Basically, that's, that's the question you should be asking yourself, given a map, how do I show that it is a homomorphism? So let F here be the set of all functions, mapping um, R into R as in example three. So we've seen this, um, this uh, before. For all A in R, define this uh, function or this map phi underscore A from F to R by this. Okay, so we've, when we're dealing with group, groups, we, uh, we came across this. So phi underscore um, A of F is equal to F A. We want to show that this map, right, this map here is a homomorphism. It is often called the um, evaluation homomorphism because you actually use it to evaluate. So you plug in the function into phi of A, and then the result is that you have to evaluate the function at A, okay? That's why it's called an evaluation homomorphism. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, the statement, the example tells us that it's a set of all functions uh, from real to real. We choose A and R. This is our uh, map, okay? And this is given to us. Good. So to show it's a homomorphism, basically we want to show these two conditions, show that this holds. If I take any two functions, I can split this into that. If I take another function, f times another function g, I can rewrite this as that. So if I'm able to show these two conditions, I have proved that it's a homomorphism. So that's what we're going to do. So if f and g are functions, right, in f, then of course, using this definition here, phi underscore a of f is f of a, and this is equal to g of a, right? Okay, so now phi of a f plus g will be equal to, I'm going to apply, if you apply that, or the same as this, if you apply this, then this will just be equal to take whatever is here and evaluate it at A, right? So I have F plus G evaluate at A. This can be written as F of A plus G of A, right? But F of A is the same as phi underscore A of F plus phi underscore A of G. And so we have shown that this is equal to that. And so that concludes the first part, okay? The first part for addition, um, if you like. Um, this is group homomorphism that we have shown. Um, so to, to show that it's a ring homomorphism, we have to, we have to add that of multiplication, okay? Okay, so here, so now we go for the multiplication, phi underscore A F of G is equal to this evaluation. Of course, this, you, you, you evaluate F of A and multiply by G of A. But again, F of A is phi underscore A times of F. And then uh, this guy is the same as phi that's called A of G, okay? So this also holds. So the second condition holds. Therefore, you can conclude that the map there um, is a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism to be specific, right? Okay, good. So that is, um, that is um, uh, a ring homomorphism. This is um, some exercise for you to try. Um, consider the function phi from the set of um, integers modulo two, the set of integers modulo two, okay? So which means all your operations, both addition and multiplication, all right, will have to be done under the um, under modulo two, okay? So this function here, this map here is defined as this five of x or the x squared. You want to show that this is um, a ring homomorphism, okay? So you try that, keep, take this into account when you are, when you are um, doing your evaluations, okay? The second one, which is much easier, I think, is this map from integers to integers defined by this, phi of x cos 2x plus 3. You want to determine whether the function is a ring homomorphism. Okay? So, um, again, try this one um, and, and, uh, and, let's, and, and see whether it's a homomorphism or not. Okay? Um, then the last one is this. We'll meet this example again. So, I'm just bringing it here so that we'll meet it under isomorphisms, then you know, it becomes easier. So here, if you're able to prove that, actually you want to show or prove that it is a ring homomorphism, okay? So the same thing. Note, note here that um, you have a set S, right? Which is a set of, um, it's a two by two matrix, but it's a special kind of a matrix, right? The diagonal elements are the same. The off diagonals are the same, but this one is negative, okay? But A and B are real. 
So it, the function taking um, um, elements from the complex um, uh, numbers two to the set of uh, two by two matrix and is defined by this. Okay, so you have you take you take a complex number and it, it becomes this. You want to show that this is a ring homomorphism, right? So you take you take if you like take uh, a complex number z one another complex number z two. Okay, these are complex numbers. All right, um, and then you want to show that of course phi of the complex number z1 plus the other complex number, this will give you phi of uh, z1 plus phi z2. And you do the same thing for the uh, multiplication, right? z1, z2 is equal to the product of phi of z1 times phi of z2, okay? Okay, and you can, you can let, if you like, your z1 be equal to, let's say, x1 plus i, y1. Okay, and Z2 will be X2 plus I, Y2, and then go through the, um, that process. Okay, you should be able to show that um, the map here is a ring homomorphism. Okay, and then once you've done that, um, uh, in our next, next uh, couple of slides, you'll see that it then becomes easier to prove that it is an isomorphism. We'll define that shortly. Okay, so try these ones. Um, let me know if you are having any challenges with it. Okay, so we are going to move on to um, ring isomorphisms. Okay, so if you remember from um, groups, we said that um, for a group, if you have a group, let's say we have a function phi, okay, we have a function phi from a group G to a group G prime. Um, um, we have, for a homomorphism, we have A star b has to be equal to f of a star f of b again this could be different this is the operation in g prime okay so that is a ring sorry a group homomorphism and we said that for a group isomorphism right this function this map here has to be one to one and it has to be on two right so it's the same under rings for um, the ring R, so we have ring R and R prime, okay? An isomorphism phi from R to R prime is a homomorphism that is one to one and onto, okay? Okay, then if that is the case, then the rings R and R prime are said to be isomorphic, okay? Yeah, isomorphic. Remember again that we said isomorphism basically tells you that the structures of the two rings in this case are similar, all right? They have similar structures when they are isomorphic. Okay, so basically it's just um, uh, similar to what we've seen before. So you have to show that something is an, it's an isomorphism, first show that it is a homomorphism. Secondly, show that it is one-to-one, -one. and then thirdly show that it is onto. Once these three are satisfied, then you know that um, it, is, uh, it is an isomorphism. Um, Alternatively, to show that something is one to one and onto, well, you can also show that it has an inverse. If I can show that um, the map here has an inverse, then I, I have shown that it, it, it is a bijection or is bijective, right? It is both one to one and onto. So that is one way. We'll, I will use this um, as well later. Okay, good. So this is a definition for a ring isomorphism. Let's move on and do um, some examples. So here's a map phi from um, a set of complex numbers to complex numbers and it's defined by this, okay? I want to show that phi is a ring isomorphism, okay? Remember, I could have given you this to also show that this is a ring homomorphism because you need to actually show that something is a homomorphism before you can, you can show that it's an isomorphism. So first we want to show that it is a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism, and then we'll show that it is one-to-one -one and onto. Okay, good. So to show that it is um, a homomorphism, we let Z1 and Z2 here, the element in, the, in C, the complex, um, complex numbers, and then we'll have phi of Z1 plus Z2, we want to be, to the addition part first. This will be equal to, of course, you add two complex numbers that gives you this. You add the real parts and add the complex parts. But you apply the function, remember, 
when you apply phi onto a complex number, you get a complex conjugate, right? So if you apply phi to this, you're going to get x plus x2 minus i into y1 plus y2, okay? Then you can rearrange this. You have x1 minus i y1 y plus x2 minus i y2. But this is the same as phi z1, right? If I take phi of z1 here, I'm going to get that. And this is phi of z2. So we have shown the positive side, the addition part, right? Phi into z1 plus z2 is equal to phi of z1 plus phi of z2. Okay, so that was easy. Then we can show the, um, that for multiplication, right? We also want to show that phi uh, into z1 times z2 is equal to phi into z1 plus z2, right? So the same thing, we know what z1 and z2 are, we multiply them out and then we get this, okay? And then we group the real part and the imaginary part. When we apply the function to it, we're going to get a complex conjugate of this. So we have, that's why we have a negative here, okay? Again, here it's not straightforward, but if you multiply this times that, you're going to get that, okay? So this is actually equal to this, right? You can try it. You know how to multiply complex numbers, right? Take this times that, this times that, and group them, you'll get that. So this is equal to this. But this guy here, once again, right? Is phi of z1, and this is phi of, uh, of z2, okay? So we have shown um, that phi is a ring homomorphism, okay? We have shown that it is, a, it's, it is a ring homomorphism. So um, that's the first step. You always have to show that it's a homomorphism if, if you're not given that. Um, then the next step is to show that the function or the map phi is one-to-one -one and it's on two, okay? Um, um, so in this case, I'm, I'm going to show that it is a bijection or is bijective. Bijection or bijective means it is both one-to-one -one and onto. I want to show that phi has an inverse function and because it has an inverse function, it is a bijection, okay? So that is easier to prove. Um, and then I will let you do an exercise where you actually prove it directly, okay? So we're going to show that the um, composition map, right? The map phi um, of phi, this composition map here, okay? Is the identity, okay? It is the identity map for um, for the function phi. Because it's, a, it's an identity, remember that if E is, um, is an identity of a function, then if I take E uh, multiplied by any element in it, or if I take any element times uh, E, I'm going to get the element back, okay? So if I take this composition map, apply it to some um, complex number, and I get a complex number back, Okay, it tells me that this guy here is the identity map for phi, all right? If it has an identity, remember that um, if x here has an inverse this, and I multiply it by x, I get the identity, right? Okay, so the fact that um, uh, this has an identity means that phi has an identity means that it has uh, an inverse function, okay? Good, so that is the process or idea I'm going to use here. Okay, so I've just explained what I'm going to do. Okay, so the next will be, uh, will be uh, straightforward. So we want to show that the identity for phi, the identity uh, for phi is actually this composition map. We want to show that this is equal to that. Once we've shown that, then that is an identity. If this is the identity, it has an inverse uh, map, phi inverse. And because it has an inverse map, that it is a bijection, it is one to one and one Okay, so apply this to the complex number Z. Okay, let's do that. Um, this composition is given by this, right? You apply the complex number to phi and then the result is applied to this. Now phi of this will, will give us what? This, right? Will give us a complex con conjugate of X plus IY, which is X minus IY, okay? Then I apply um, it again apply the function again to it, and then I get x plus i y, y, which means the composition map works on z to give me z back, okay? That means that the composition map here is the identity map of phi. And so phi has an inverse, okay? It is the identity, therefore it has uh, this inverse. Uh, since it has an inverse map, 
then phi here is a bijection. In other words, it is both one-to-one -one and onto. If you have a function f from a set x to y, okay, and f here has an inverse function that takes elements from y to x, okay, to x. Well, that can only happen, right? If in the first place, it is one-to-one, -one. every element here has one and only one. Okay, the number of elements here will be equal to the number of elements there, if you like. And so that's why I can move from here to there using the inverse and then from here to here because they're one to one. And so once I've shown that there is an inverse, that shows that it is one to one and it is also on to. Okay, therefore, this um, is the identity map. And so this has an inverse. And since it has an inverse, um, this guy here is a bijection or is bijective. Okay. So, so since it's bijective, phi is a ring isomorphism. Okay, so to su summarize, to prove isomorphism, prove that something is, prove that it's a hom ring homomorphism, show that it is one to one, and then it is on to. Okay, good. So um, um, this is what we have shown here. It's a ring isomorphism. Uh, this looks like a repetition, right? Uh, repeat I think. Okay, good. Now, oh, I, I know why. Because because um, because I didn't uh, use the full screen. Okay, because I didn't full, use the full screen. That's why. So under the full screen, um, we have this. Then we prove this, and then I want you to do this as an exercise. Okay. So instead of using this technique that I used here, I want you to prove bijection. Right. Prove one to one and onto uh, directly, okay? You know the direct approach, the direct approach to proving that something is one-to-one -one is to show that um, phi, if, um, if phi into Z1 is equal to phi into Z2, then Z1 is equal to Z2, okay? Try to prove, prove it using that, okay? So use this, okay? Directly, by directly, I mean, First, show that if I take phi of z1, if phi z1 is equal to phi of z2, okay, uh, show that z1 is equal to z2. That will show one to one. And also show um, onto, right? By onto, show that if you pick some a complex number, z whatever star um, in the co-domain of phi, Okay, you can have you can have another complex number in the domain, call it z whatever, z t. Okay, you can have a complex number in the domain such that phi of this guy will give you this. Okay, then you have shown uh, that it is onto. All right, so try it. Great. Um, the last one is actually we want to show that um, that is a map that is that is not. An isomorphism, okay. Um, that's because it's not even a homomorphism, okay. So note that the abelian groups z plus and two z plus are isomorphic, right? And uh, this map here, where phi um, x is equal to two x, okay. You can check that. Check that this guy, these guys are um, isomorphic groups, okay. Okay, this and this. Okay, that's easy to check. Um, we want to do that under addition, so that, that's straightforward. But even though it's isomorphic, isomorphic under groups, uh, phi here is not a ring isomorphism, okay? Why is that? Well, if I take phi into x, y, right? By definition of the map, I'm going to get to x, y, okay? But if I take phi of x times phi of y, I'm going to get two x times two y, which is equal to four, x, y, 4, x, y is not the same as 2, x, y. So this guy is not equal to that. So it is not a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism, neither is it an isomorph isomorphism, right? So phi is not a ring isomorphism, okay? Right, if you, if you did the addition part, you'll know that it's satisfied, it's fine, but the multiplication is not satisfied. And you need both of them to be satisfied to be um, a ring um, of uh, homomorphism, uh, and then you can go on to show it's, it is 
um, by, by adjective, but it is not a homomorphism. So we, we stop there. Okay, so here's an exercise for you. I've, uh, I've talked long enough. Um, so we've seen this example before when we're talking about homomorphisms. Here, instead of proving it's a homomorphism, we've already shown that it is, well, if you did the exercise, that it is a homomorphism. So the next, to prove that it's an isomorphism, you just have to do two things, show that it is one-to-one, -one, and then show that it is onto, and then you can conclude that it is a ring isomorphism, okay? Uh, so that will bring us to the end of um, homomorphisms and isomorphisms, okay? If you look in the text, right, that, um, that, um, that we've recommended, you will find uh, several other examples on some, some exercises to try with, okay? All right, all the best. I'll come back again and then we'll look at sub rings and then um, and fills. So I'm going to end this for now.